your last video um, says solutions and future directions. Um, here, you, I want to deal with your questions. Your first question is, in your opinion, what are some potential solutions or approaches for fostering more equitable housing provision in Johannesburg? Um, you know, the you know, as I indicated earlier, one of the 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 greatest cost um, towards you know um, is housing towards um, equitable housing in any city, and in particular in Johannesburg, is the cost of land. Um, the land, the closer you, you go towards the city uh, center or where the economic hub of the city is, the more land parcels become a lot more expensive and the less affordable those land parcels are uh, to uh, government institutions like the municipality and even the provincial government. So you already have one uh, hurdle to cross of getting uh, land that is adequately priced uh, to be accessed for, 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 for housing provision. And therefore, <clears throat> you start from a point of disadvantage because the, the cost of the land already, you know, uh, indicates to you that, gosh, if you were to provide, you know, uh, affordable housing on that piece of land, you would definitely not break even, especially as as a city. And uh, <clears throat> I think the, the most sort of um, a, a approach that one would propose for providing uh, equitable housing in the city would be more where we focus more on social housing because social housing is a collaborative housing scheme. It is a housing scheme where uh, not only the city is a funding agency but also your provincial or, and sometimes even your national government. And so if we could identify um, land parcels close enough to, to, the, to the city, that would be earmarked for a lot more social housing uh, uh, developments. Uh, I'm sure over time we would have dealt with a lot more of our housing problems um, as we experience currently. But of course you have you, your challenges too where the social housing schemes are normally not uh, owned by the occupants. They are rented. And you, you have challenges of collecting rent, you have challenges of unemployment, where quite a number of fa families would um, you know, be unemployed while living in these in this units. And eventually, you as the administration of these social housing schemes, like the Johannesburg Social Housing Company, would have very little income for you to be able uh, to, to make do with particularly payment of your services and other uh, you know, uh, responsibilities. So the, um, <clears throat> but, you know, the, we could you know, in Johannesburg, there are a lot of abandoned um, uh, buildings that are run down. Um, I think we, we need to use these houses, these um, units, these flats as, you know, our priority for densification, where we clearly identify all of these, um, you know, uh, vacant, um, you know, flats and buildings and where possible, we densify them, we, 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 we <clears throat> renovate them, we refurbish them, and we allocate them towards, you know, households 
um, you know, through a social housing uh, program. Um, but I think there is also a need, in my view, that the city or those agencies that are responsible for housing within the city should make a lot more uh, uh, private uh, funding available for small developers. You're not going to solve your city uh, housing problems by only thinking that your bigger developers, your more established developers will be the ones that would provide housing. No, <clears throat> you need to look at you are emerging developers to through small funding um, allocations where these guys could identify one or two uh, buildings, give them three years to 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 work on those, and in that way, one would be increasing the pool of those um, housing providers in the city. It could be by way of Social housing, yes, um, but it could also be some way of, um, you know, subsidized uh, housing within these schemes to where the individual households would be given some kind of a, a housing subsidy. It could be the same sort of amount of housing subsidy that one would uh, get uh, from, say, a normal RDP housing development. But rather than you channel this um, um, housing subsidy in the inner city, where people would save quite substantially from, you know, traveling um, distances like from as far as Orange Farm to the city every day. So you provide the the, the housing subsidy in this regard. Perhaps you just increase it slightly by 15% to cater for the demands of the uh, gentrification or the uh, what what is it the, the demands of your 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 renovations <clears throat> and in that way as government you would be saving on you know paying transport subsidies because either way whether people are staying in orange farm in those uh, uh, far flung areas you as government would still be responsible um, to pay for a, a subsidy for uh, PATCO and other bus operations to ferry people to and from those areas. So my take is we need to, to maybe um, look at another funding model. Um, for for housing, especially within the confines of the inner city. <clears throat> Your other question is, how can community participation and engagement play a role in shaping future housing policies and developments? Of course, community participation is very, very important. Um, it's very important in, in, in many respects. Firstly, when you, you involve co communities in developing these uh, housing um, you know, um, areas, you already prepare them for uh, a responsibility post-development. You know, it's, they, ne they, they need to feel that they co-own the developments themselves. And in that way, they are more likely to, to, to look after these developments. They are more likely to be a lot more responsible in so far as <clears throat> their um, responsibilities towards payment of uh, uh, raise and services is uh, concerned. So it is, it is very important that every uh, housing development or human settlement development should be preceded by a, a, a deliberate community participation processes um, that that would uh, ensure that there is a buy-in from those communities on the future yield of whatever development it is. 
Um, you know, the, even in so far as policy is concerned in this regard, it is critical that when policies are designed or devised for, for, you know, for future housing development, um, these policies are guided, are informed by a, a, a great deal of uh, public and community participation because there are smaller things that communities can can input into these policies far more than what your experts or so-called experts would be able to 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 think themselves you know we 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 talk in planning of an an expert as opposed to an impact you know, the communities are more your impasse. In other words, the knowledge that they bring into these developments are their own lived experiences, as opposed to me as an expert who comes from outside, who comes into their areas to try and, and, and uh, tell them how better to develop their communities. So it is of critical importance to... Um, to involve communities in whatever house in uh, whatever policy development uh, the city is engaged in your other question is are there any innovative practices or models from other cities or countries that could inspire positive change in johannesburg i I'm not uh, aware of, 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 of those innovative models um, or innovative practices. Um, but I think the, the one thing that maybe we should, uh, um, we should change from focusing on is this um, preoccupation that Every housing should every house must be developed by use of brick brick and mortar. I think we we need to as a city move away from this. Um, you know other models that one has seen of late. Of course, they are also historical models. Is that um, um, countries do not necessarily use a brick and mortar to develop their uh, housing uh, schemes. They are using cheaper um, materials like uh, where you've got the abundance of, 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 of uh, wood. They would use uh, wooden sort of structures, but very stable wooden, wooden uh, structures to create uh, the community housing. Um, in some uh, cases now of late, we have seen where you know you know uh, countries use your 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 containers, your your uh, main sort of you know steel containers. Um, in this case, one would think of uh, the transnet containers that are. So many in 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 our different cities, these containers could be con, uh, uh, converted in 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 very innovative ways to create a housing uh, in a very cheaper way. You can actually um, you know insulate them against the elements. You can really have you know reasonable sustainable housing schemes developed out of this. But in our case, um, there has been a bit of reluctance, not only on the part of the, the eventual beneficiaries of these houses, but also on the, on the part of the, the policy makers themselves. Our city planning laws are still very much fixated on, um, you know, on 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 creating, you know, brick and mortar uh, structures as buildings, and not really regarding other types of buildings as fitting within the de the description of 
um, you know, building in terms of your know, building regulations. So we need to move to uh, away from the brick and mortar um, approach and maybe introduce other quicker ways of providing housing. I mean, if you use different uh, uh, technologies, we could provide housing in deep slot within 12 months or within 24 months that would accommodate almost the entire of the informal uh, uh, dwellings within deep slot in, in particular. Um, yes, I think we need to move away from this uh, uh, fixation uh, on brick and mortar as the only way of uh, creating permanent housing uh, structures. Um, the, your last question is, what do you envision as the ideal future for housing provision in the city? And what steps do you believe are necessary to achieve that vision? Um, <clears throat> you know, the, as I've, I think I've already indicated in, 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 on, on this question that you we need, firstly, we need to, to have a, a different funding model for affordable housing uh, schemes in the, in the city where your conventional subsidy is needs to be topped up slightly and instead of the subsidy being only focused on the outlying areas of freestanding units there must be a deliberate focus on on the on the inner cities where you use that part of the subsidy more to 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 refurbish these vacant uh, and abandoned uh, buildings and invaded buildings within the city. And in that way, you would immediately provide housing that would be closer to the, to the economic hub of the, of the, of the municipality. And uh, the, what we also need, of course, is to, to, as I have already indicated, to look at other alternative um, uh, building materials that would be used to do our, our city developments, our housing developments in the city. And the may, the obviously, the obvious step to do this is to, for, 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 the, for the city to have, to, to have a common sort of uh, approach with the provincial government, so that it is not either the city or the provincial government. They, they need to all um, uh, look towards one common vision of providing housing in, 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 in and around the city. Of course, lastly, I don't know whether this is possible in, in a democracy like ours, where we've got uh, you know, um, freedom of, you know, uh, we, private pri property rights. Maybe there is, there is a, 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 a need for a large-scale expropriation of land, especially in the outskirts of the city, so that those land parcels that have been lying there for years for speculative reasons could be brought into the future sort of um, a cityscape to provide housing um, in an affordable way in those areas. I think in that in that regard, you can really provide a lot more than what the city is currently providing, and you can actually work into those new housing developments, your innovations of alternative um, um, uh, uh, construction materials and so on. Yeah, I think uh, that is what I could say, and I hope uh, that would be helpful to you, uh, Nombu. Um, uh